So as an aside, if we look at a certain number of issues with NAT, um, which is why we've mentioned in many cases that we recommend that you stay away from it as much as you can. And one of the first issues is how do you scale NAT performance for large networks? Because if you limit TCP or UDP ports per user, you're going to harm the user experience. This means that people on your network who are doing um, things that require lots of sessions, like um, mapping, um, like zooming into areas of maps when they haven't yet cached the images, they're going to get a lot of those blank squares instead of the map um, loading. Similarly, um, if you have very, very short timeouts on inactive sessions, that means that somebody's long-lived connections, for example, an SSH, will keep timing out and they have to re-establish it over and over again. And in a way, it forces you to redesign your network to try and balance the load between different places. Secondly, NAT has the side effect of it breaks the end-to-end -end model of IP. The goal was the hosts have the intelligence and they connect directly to each other as much as possible and the network just carries the packets across but now you have the NAT box that is having to do a lot of translation people who are designing new ip protocols have to design it with the knowledge that there's a device most likely in the middle that will intercept the packets it also breaks end-to-end -end network security. Um, if you're trying to do things like IPsec and you are trying to secure the packets from source to destination, you now have to cater for the fact that there might be a device in the middle that changes the source and destination address. So you cannot just simply create tunnels um, directly from one end to the other without catering for NAT. And it will break non-NAT friendly applications or the NAT has to be upgraded if possible um, to support particular applications. A common one is H.264 video, um, which is pretty easy to get running for video over um, IP, but it breaks really badly with NAT and newer versions of um, voice over IP applications um, have a lot of code inbuilt on how they're going to circumvent the fact that you cannot connect directly to the end um, device. Also, you cannot easily host content behind a NAT. You would have to probably forward ports, um, start playing games where you're forwarding ports from a public IP if you have one. Um, in the case where your service provider just gives you a private IP, then even that is not possible. Um, so if you just have one NAT uh, public IP and you're NATing it inside your network, then you might have the chance of forwarding ports like um, port 80 or port 443 to your server. But if you handed just a NAT address, then it's, it's even impossible to host any content behind such a network. NAT makes fast rerouting and multi-homing difficult because you have state. So you have state to maintain in addition to the addresses that you have. And um, typically you're forced to buy some sort of layer seven application load balancer to handle the load balancing between NAT. So um, multi-homing is typically done using BGP. BGP will work if you have some public address space that you can announce and then you can move between the links. For the service provider, um, you would have to move address pools between carrier grade NATs in case there's a problem with that part of the network. And that is a lot of configuration because it doesn't happen automatically then you'd be able to route round issues with the links going to that carrier grade NAT. So you'd have to move the configuration and then move people's routing so that they now point towards the new carrier grade um, NAT 
and it makes it difficult, um, especially for a service provider's point of view. Now, when you're doing address sharing, then you have issues of reputation, reliability, and security issues um, for the person who's using the address space um, because people end up not being um, accountable for what they're doing. And if you get a, a report that um, such and such an IP address has been causing ABC kind of havoc, then you cannot contact the end user to let them know and then see if you can work around whatever issue um, is causing the havoc on the internet. There's also the problem that the NAT device must keep state of the connections and this creates a huge load on the NAT device and it means that if the NAT device loses state then the connections die. So this makes the NAT device a target for miscreants um, because if they can attack your NAT device, it will impact a large number of users because maintaining that state is CPU intensive. Whereas if a device is just a router and it's forwarding packets, um, it can likely do it at line rate, but it's difficult to design a NAT device that can forward packets and maintain this state at line rate. It's quite hard. So um, if somebody scans your network as a service provider and they notice a, a, a NAT device that is doing a lot of work, then that would be a device that they would attack, try to attack first. Now, when you look at consumer NAT devices, um, given um, 5,000 sessions would just mean only 12 connected devices, and then you get NAT table full error messages um, if you're looking at a public IP. And um, we've talked about broken Google Maps and stack internet. Um, and this is uh, with a moderate to a high um, user. You can probably get by with more sessions per device um, before the device starts um, collapsing. Um, we've talked about earlier how you could like um, reduce the sessions and things, but your concurrent sessions are in, you know, the, the few thousands. For carrier grade NAT devices, you will have probably 20 million sessions, ideally. This is what um, the Cisco ASR um, recommends. But realistically, if you, again you have um, a heavy user, on your network. That is about 50,000 users if you're talking about 400 sessions per user, a moderate to heavy user. If an IRR like Afrinic hands you uh, a slash 22 um, of IPv4 because Afrinic is the only IRR that still has address space, that means that out of your slash 22, you only have 640,000 users that you can serve with your carrier grade NAT device. Um, without having to seriously, seriously punish the users by reducing their sessions and, and timing them out early. It's difficult to scale and it doesn't scale well. 